Daryl Hunt is a free man now, but he spent 18 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. And the primary evidence? Eyewitness testimony linking him to the crime scene. Now, we all think we would never ID the wrong person in the crime, even though studies show it happens most of the time. To test the accuracy of eyewitness testimony, WFMY News 2's Lachelle Yates set up an experiment. Wait until you see how this Two Wants to Know investigation unfolds. You get hit under the kneecap. You're watching Dr. Rob Guttentag teach That's a psych class at UNC Greensboro. It's muscle. Wednesday afternoon. That's a spinal reflex. And about five minutes into his lecture, this young man walks in. Uh, yeah. Tad late, I think. He's not here for class. Rather, the professor's briefcase. Excuse me. Excuse me. You have all just been witnesses to a crime, and we want to see what good witnesses you were. Dr. Guttentag asks the students to quickly write down everything they remember about the crime. He needs specifics here. What did the perp look like? His shirt, his pants, and his hair. Our suspect, Ethan, is waiting in the hall. You take a look. He's wearing a tan zip-up jacket, jeans, and he has brown hair combed back. A lot of students get these details right. But not everyone. I thought he had like a beige fleece thing on with darker beige patches on it. This student right in the front row said... It was a tan vest and it had black lining. He had a long sleeve shirt on with a, a stripe over the middle. I thought he was wearing khakis. We're looking for uh, five foot six with a vest and tan khakis or six foot two with blue jeans and a jacket. <laughs> How well did the students describe Ethan's physical appearance? So most of you didn't feel you remembered anything about the face at all? Wow. His hair? I said it was um, kind of mid-length, blonde and shaggy. It was blonde, though. I had blonde also. Blonde. Then Dr. Guttentag brings Ethan back into the room. And watch this twist that even shocked the professor. This is the perp. <laughs> this is Ethan. Quickly, Dr. Guttentag picks up on the confusion and starts trying to influence okay. the so student's memory. How many of you realize that this is a trick and that isn't really him? Put up your hand, put your hand up high if you realize that we brought a different person in. I definitely don't think that was him. How's he different? His hair is slicked back and I think he's wearing different jeans. Again, listen to the student on the front row. Like and I saw his vest. I don't remember seeing a jacket. Put up your hand real high if you did think that the guy who came in was the perp. Fewer than 10 students raised their hands. How many people said, realized it wasn't him? Looks like about 80. Okay. This is him. <laughs> this is him. This is Ethan. This is the person who came in the room before. He didn't change anything at all. You and the students just witnessed what researchers are already discovering. Investigators can knowingly or unknowingly influence eyewitnesses. He told us that it wasn't him. Like he tried to trick us. So I started believing that it wasn't him. It was shockingly and frighteningly easy. And it wasn't just that the students didn't doubt when we then led some of them a little further to say that it wasn't really him. They were sure it wasn't him. At the end, many of the students said our experiment opened their eyes, including the students sitting on the front row. I'm personally shocked and I feel kind of bad because I'm like right here. I could have reached out and touched him and I'm still looking for the blonde hair. This is proof that just five seconds of looking at somebody isn't enough to convict somebody. Put up your hand if you thought it was pretty hard and it kind of scares you to think that this is the basis on which we convict people. Our experiment reflects the results of other studies. Some eyewitnesses just don't give very accurate descriptions of the suspect. But yet, almost half the time, eyewitness testimony convicts an innocent person. Now, why does this happen? Well, Dr. Guttentag says when we try to remember the past, we are actually creating details in our memory. Sometimes we're accurate, sometimes we're not. To help you be a better eyewitness, we've posted some tips on our website. Go to WFMYNews2.com and look in the Two Wants to Know investigation section for the headline, Eyewitnesses Misidentify Suspect.
Lachelle Yates, WFMY News 2.